that this like I was at one of these I don't know some booster meeting or something and I, I suddenly realized I'm just I got my you know my leg up on top of uh, you know when you cross your legs and I've got uh, sandals on and mm-hmm. I and I'm just doing my thing and suddenly I realized that the the whole room just staring right at that I'm like whoa <laughs> and I put my leg down and kind of like it's bad enough you're heavily tattooed dude you don't need to show these poor people who know nothing about your industry that you have a dick tattooed on your ankle you know <laughs> shit's about to go down I'm feeling something in my spirit Chops and Tats with Aaron Della Vadova. Hello, friends, beautiful beings of pure light and love and creativity. I know that's what you are, because if you're watching this show, that's what you must be. You wouldn't give a shit about what I'm doing here. So, greetings to all of you. I've been asking you at the end of a lot of my shows, hey, who do you want to hear from? What's what's interesting that I've been producing over here? And a lot of you love the tattooer episodes. Um, so, today, that's what I'm doing. I've got a gentleman with me today who I've worked with for many years. We'll have to clarify how many when he gets on the mic. But um, it's been a privilege. The, the, the man is extremely talented. He's a, I guess you would call him a, I don't know, this is so hard, neo-traditional would be one way to put it. Lots of really interesting uses of color, really uh, warped images drawn in his very specific style. It's very difficult to explain, and you'll get his links to into the show and check it out. You just have to see it with your own eyes. It's beautiful, amazing, progressive, and most of all, unique work to him. I mean, if you know his work and you see it on someone right away, I know he did that tattoo. And that's, to me, something to be respected and honored because not a lot of tattooers make a voice for themselves that can be recognized in that way. Not a lot of artists do. It's one of our greatest challenges, and he has done that in spades. Um, on top of that, he's a sweetheart of a man, really good friend of mine. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy hearing about him and his life story and his journey into tattooing. So with all that being said, please welcome my guest today, Patrick Sweeney. I was going to try to put an Irish accent on there, but I thought it would sound <laughs> English or something. He's Irish, by the way. <laughs> welcome. Well, American Irish. American Irish. Whatever. That's true. Yeah. None of us are. We're yeah. all Americans, right? Yeah. We're all mutts. I'm about as Irish as a box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> Which is made in China. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. I'm so stoked you're here. Thank you for having me, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, Happy to be here. You, you just got off a, of a vacation. You've been traveling up the coast of California with your family, huh? Yeah. We uh, rented an RV, Yeah. and that was super intimidating, never having done that before. You probably had the hang uh, of it in like yeah, an hour. It didn't take long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, honestly, it, it really was just like all in my head, and then... You know, people drive buses and RVs every day. Why can't I, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's just one of those things where I just never did it and finally, like, got up the nerve to, to do it. And it was awesome. You guys yeah. had a good time? Yeah, it was it was sick, man. Honestly, I mean, it's been a long time since we did any kind of road trip mm. of any sort. Um, you know, since moving to San Diego, it's just been, you know, kind of go, go, go. Mm. COVID hit, you know. And then mm. keep going. Uh, and, you know, we bought the house and, mm-hmm. and just didn't really get out get out much you know mm-hmm. like even after i mean buying a new place is like you know fucking you just stay there you know you just kind of stay there and so you're happy to be there i mean for us anyways and so and yeah. not just happy to be there but it always needs something yeah. or you want to do yeah so it was like the first time we had gotten out of this like just cycle of go to work pay the bills and repeat right. sort of thing right. you know and uh, it was awesome well good yeah, yeah. i got you at the right moment yeah. Coming off, yeah, coming off that, you must be in a Zen state. I think so. Yeah, as, as close as I get to it, anyways. Uh, when I was driving, I was thinking that you know, just like just driving, like you know, I don't know, hour four or five or something into like you know, you take these breaks, right? But then you just start driving and you forget how much time has passed, and you know, you've either like your brain has either been going a mile a minute. Or you've been thinking about like the same thing for like three hours and you didn't realize it, you know, and <laughs> right. that's kind of like meditation, right? I mean, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's a great question. What is yeah. meditation? Because I mean, it could be like a light you see like at the, this, this hill you're approaching, you know, it's like, right. 
you know, 50 miles away, you just kind of barely see it, and you get closer and closer to it, and it's still on your mind. It's been like two hours. Well, that would be meditation for yeah, sure. I yeah, think if totally. you're thinking about art projects and uh, work-related material, yeah, or no. then, then, then no, it's No, I tried to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, but if you're staring at a light on the horizon right, for an hour right, till you get to it, you know, like, yeah, I would call that meditation. Kind of. Driving meditation. Driving meditation. <laughs> you got to, st- you know, in the RV, you're still like you're fucking white knuckles all the time. I mean, I, I was anyway. It's my I first know. time, so I'm like, and it's an older truck, so I'm like doing the. I'm driving this, up, bitch. I'm yeah. dri- <laughs> you know, just like literally trying to keep it in the middle and doing that like you know old time thing, driving a truck. Like that's <laughs> literally what I was doing is just trying to keep this thing straight. So it was it was. It was uh, intimidating Bring at first. Bring your mic a little closer. It was intimidating at first, and then by the time we came home, yeah, I just, you know, I kind of missed it, you know? Yeah. I've done a couple of those in my life. You're making me want to do one right now, to right. be honest. You know, I tend our vacations tend to be hop on an airplane, fly to some place, check into some hotel, sit by a pool, fly home, which is great. But there's something a little more special about getting Dude. on the road, on the open road. You know, like, hmm. we weren't like... Uh, Probably the first time as well that I had got, driven, driven any distance and wasn't like just snacking the whole time, mm-hmm. you know, eating candy, which just makes you feel like shit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so it was it was great actually to, yeah, you know, just eat like three solid meals, you know, because we brought like all the cooking stuff mm-hmm. and loaded up the fridge with normal food. And so we'd stop, you know, at, at meal time and like cook it up, eat, and then get on the road again. And then when we were up at the campsite, we were catching trout and then cooking it up for dinner, you know? And That's like, rad. I mean, the raddest thing was really, yeah, showing my daughter this whole thing where, you know, she's never been camping really before. Mm. And I mean, even in an RV, it's not like there's probably some real campers Still, out there. They're out in the Rolling outdoors. You're taking bit. her fishing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, she's unplugged. She's not looking at her Nintendo or watching TV. Right. You know, we, there was a couple TVs in the trailer. However, uh, they, they didn't work, you know, thankfully, you know, because at first I thought that'd be cool. Like, oh, sick, some TV, she could watch movies on the way up. And, and But it was a blessing that they weren't even working because, man, she just looked out the window like I did when I was a kid and yeah. let her imagination yeah. run, you know. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, you're kind of getting into some, some territory I wouldn't mind getting into maybe after we get into your tattoo stuff. But yeah. this raising kids in this generation, which I have too as well. Terrifying. And, and it's just uh, their phones and their access to TikTok and all these different social platforms. And, and it's just, uh, it is what it is. You know, I have an 18 year old that's going to college here in a month and she's a good kid. She's, I think, turned out well. And she was exposed to a lot of that stuff. Mm. I haven't seen any really big negative effects yet. But I mean, I do see her a flip through the phone i don't know she'll never admit it but i can tell like she gets stressed like somebody else is in mammoth and they're having fun and sure. she's not there and why isn't her life as cool as their life and how could she not feel that way i feel that way as a 51 year old man when i look through tiktok or sure. not tiktok i don't look at tiktok but instagram like you see that picture of your buddy doing something rad and you're like damn why am so <laughs> I, I don't know how mad but then my younger one she's a little bit had it more than my older we'll see how that goes and she seems a little more addicted mm, yeah. so I don't know. There's an addiction there, man. Like, you could see it happen, and it takes, like, a week. You give a kid a Nintendo Switch in Fortnite, and they, like, turn into... It's addiction's the right word. It's a dopamine. Screen zombies. They're getting dopamine releases. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, they got algorithms that time how the brain releases dopamine in the in the in the game or whatever you're involved in hits you with certain material at those peak moments to try to... Get more of it to release. Oh, yeah. To get you more hooked. All the fl- flashing chimes and, you know, mm-hmm. the, the small, like, coins you collect along the yeah. way. It's like, it's all about just, like, that dopamine drip, you know? And <laughs> it's so it's, fucked up. It's fucked up, yeah. It's really fucked up. And this is coming from a guy that I grew up playing video games, too, you know? Just right. as it was just right at the right time, you know, grew up in, the, you know, I was born in 81, and so 80s, 90s, we had video games, and... I was obsessed with him too, you know. I think my dad, being who he was, like definitely saw that that was like a, you know, you, you know, this will rot your brain kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I think he's, you know, he's definitely onto something because he, he took that thing out of my hands when I was a kid. I didn't get an, another gaming system till I was like sixteen or something like ah, that. You know? Good on you, dad. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, in, in the case of your older daughter, from what I understand, she's a really busy girl. You keep her really active. She's mm-hmm. in cheerleading, probably you know, gymnastics, that sort of thing, and keeping kids occupied keeping myself occupied Mm -hmm. you know i mean shit dude if i get into a new game like i won't get any work done at all and it's almost like i don't even care 
It's like, I just want to <laughs> advance to the, you know, it's to the next level. Yeah. And it's fun, you know, and it's, what's the difference between that and watching TV? I don't know. Like as long as you can like sparse it out. Right. I mean, you yeah. could argue that video game is better for you. At least yeah. you're, you're, you're using your eye to hand coordination. You're figuring out a puzzle. As long as you're getting better at the game, though, right? If you just keep sucking at, at like, <laughs> playing Fortnite or something, then, like, I don't know. That Th- you're those really... kids just get addicted to TikTok because yeah. you don't have to be good at that. Yeah, there you go. You just <laughs> keep swiping. Yeah. I am stoked to announce that Solon Clothing is now a sponsor of the show. I've known Ryan and Jeremy for 20-plus years. Amazing human beings, huge supporters of the tattoo community. If you're a tattoo artist and you want to do a, a t-shirt design with Sullen, you can send that over to design at sullenclothing.com and they would love to see what you've got. Uh, again, thank you, Sullen, for your support. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jeremy. And now back to the show. Well, that kind of brings us into to where I wanted to go is, you know, you're an artist. You're a tattoo artist. You've carved out a, a place in the world that you want to be for a living and Mm -hmm. i think that that's you know if you do a the average person you know that's rare it's rare it's not many people find that and and that's special and so i'm always curious like how you end up in a place like you've ended up obviously Mm -hmm. you're talented we'll get to all that but you know you talk about your dad and how he was like what was that like as a kid i mean when did you start drawing and how was your your parents and how you know give me the story of you as a kid moving into becoming an artist and how that journey was well i i played a, a lot of hockey as a kid and my dad had a whole you know goal set out for me you know from a young age when he recognized some form of like athletic talent you know he saw you know he saw a path for me really and uh yeah he you know he just really narrated that path for my entire youth and you know teenage years and um i feel like you know i I, as a kid you you, what do you do you know you do kid things as a kid that are really just really basic stimulant sort of things you you know eat the things if you let a kid eat whatever they want to eat well they're gonna eat junk food you know because they just they, they like the taste and the sugar rush and everything and so you know i mean i just wanted to be a kid and and make my you know kids want to have happy parents and when you do good things as a kid and your parents are stoked, well, then they take you to Toys R Us and they buy you something, you know, and or whatever. And so it was pretty simple. And I just kept that going for a long time. And then it kind of developed into this, you know, somewhat like you know, fairly toxic thing with my, my dad's issues, you know, his, his demons that he carried around his whole life. Um, and, you know, it, it really went from me you know being a kid having some love for a game you know and then it really you know stripping away by the time i was 18 i wasn't playing for myself anymore it was just the only thing that i felt like i was good at it was the only thing that kept him happy you know and um they would like i looked around i remember specifically one time uh i was at a training camp uh over the summer and that's what you do when you're playing sports like you play your because you were playing at a a top level i was playing junior a's yeah when i when i turned 16 i i started trying out trying out for junior a teams which is like it's, it's a pretty top level as far as minor hockey goes you know mm-hmm. and then the, the next step af- after that is like major junior where you know these kids are getting professional contracts and you know you know mm-hmm. you, you were possibly mm-hmm. on your way to on being the way. a pro yeah yeah um well i mean would have been good to utilize that go to go to college get get a free education you mm-hmm. know uh, i remember getting a lot of mail from colleges and stuff although i was a terrible student mm-hmm. you know because it was literally like yeah i came second to, to it was hockey was always first and you know the mm-hmm. everything else came came second um but you were saying you were at it you remember it came to a head yeah you were at a camp i was mm-hmm. at a camp and i was in the locker room and i had just left my buddies you know i had a little break between hockey season and coming home and then uh, I was hanging out with friends, and then I had to go away to camp again. And I was sitting around, and those guys were so pumped to be there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they lived and breathed this sport, you know? And, like, when they go home in the summer, they're playing for fun. And when they're in winter, I mean, it's just it's what they love to do. Mm-hmm. And their friends, you know, they had known each other for a long time. It was their culture, you know? And, and I immediately recognized like man this that's not me like this isn't what makes me happy like i don't genuinely the only time i was happy doing it is when i was doing it well 
mm-hmm. and I got recognition for that, you know, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the actual act of it that mm-hmm. brought me any sort of happiness that the act of it was fucking hard and grueling and mm-hmm. painful, you know, yeah. and injuries all the time, always just recovering from an injury of some sort, you know? So, um, I think that was like 17 or 18 at that time. And I was like, that's you it. Had a click moment. Yeah. It just really did click. Um, the rest of the camp, I think that I was at played out and I, I ended up actually playing really well from what I remember. Um, but, uh, it was really limited, uh, uh, spots on the team that year. So I didn't get picked up and I just took it as a sign of like, that's it. You know, mm-hmm. like I need to go figure out what really brings me, you know, some, uh, satisfaction just by the act of doing it, you know, cause I, I never really explored it other than of course, you know, drawing and stuff was always like just a little hobby. You know, I, like I said, I was a poor student in high school, except for art classes. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's pretty common with any one of us tattooers. We probably always like a star, you know, for whatever reason we can make pottery way better than like <laughs> the average kids that like do really well in math class, but we yeah. can man throw a fucking, we can make a bong <laughs> real easy. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, man. And that was that, you know, I, I stopped playing hockey and um how'd your dad take that he was he was not thrilled you know i mean he uh after that he 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 went off on his own path we you know i don't know if we'll, we'll talk about that some other time but um <laughs> he uh yeah he, he so he he definitely insisted okay well you know you're gonna do something so uh i took out some student loans and went to an art school went to art institute for for two years and got an associate's degree, but I had no idea what I was going to do. You know, I thought, you know, how did, how does an artist make money? You know, um, you know, movies and stuff, I don't know, animation, Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, but having no experience in with computers at all, this was back in, you know, 99, you know, 2000, you know, and I was, you know, I had used computers, but like, you know, it was not like a computer tech guy at Mm -hmm. all. So, um, yeah, went into this animation course, uh, got some really great life drawing classes out of it, though, and character drawing sort of thing. Mm. Um, But probably most important was it just really also, you know, started, like, solidifying this idea that, like, I I enjoy doing this. Like, Mm. you know, five, six hours on a a canvas or, you know, just making something creative like that was, like, you know, enjoyable, you know, Mm. and it was was something that I was looking forward to doing. And so just like that, you know, I went from being a, bad student in high school to fucking straight A's in college, you know, and mm. granted it was like, you know, again, yes, art institute or whatever, but yeah. still, you know, I was, I was attentive. I was there, you know, I was engaged. I, I, I gave a shit about what mm. I was doing and, and all of a sudden, yeah, I wasn't a dummy, you know, I was like, I was just glad to be there. And so I was doing well, you know, and so two years of that, uh, I think, I mean, that was also about the time I started getting tattooed, like 17, mm. 18 years old. Mm. Um, but at that time, even being an artist, you know, aside from having friends ask you to draw up their tattoos, which, you know, friends would ask to do that, you right. know, back then, I, I didn't see how it would be a world that I would be a part of, you know, mm-hmm. every, every tattoo experience I had 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 been, you know, fairly intimidating, like going into a place with some, you know, pretty, you know, intimidating looking dudes who were, you know, what was your first very tattoo? straight faced. I got my last name across my back at uh classic yeah I, you know <laughs> what's what's really classic though is i was my i was i'm the worst tattoo client you know i really am like i go in there as an artist right and like i think and i probably spent you know m- a month on this fucking drawing and i think it's the coolest thing ever and i hand it to the guy and i could just like being a tattooer now like i know exactly what's going through his head and i remember he recommended like sure you don't want to do some like old english or something and man, I wish I had said yes. Yeah, you're like, do, no, you're, do you're doing old. that. No, we're doing my '90s graffiti style, yeah. fucking, <laughs> oh, just bad, bro. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, he, you know, he gave me what I wanted. Um, <laughs> nice. How was that? Yeah, man, really. No, he did his job well. He was a good tattooer. Uh, didn't didn't make me feel, you know, uh, bad about what I wanted. I mean, other than the overall like intimidating vibe of the place, you know. Was, right. Other than that, you know, they weren't like talking shit. So they, they were pros for sure. Oh. Yeah. And got my tat started. My, and, uh, <laughs> um, and that was that. So I, but I didn't see how I would do that for a living, you know, mm. no idea. Um, and that is until I just, I don't know, kept getting tattooed mm-hmm. and came across the right group of people mm. that were, you know, 
I don't know, maybe more my speed or more welcoming or whatever. And also very much needing to fulfill a role in the studio that had just had like a large, you know, a large exodus. You know, you've seen that over the years, I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know, yes. groups of people all leaving at once. And so it was a place that I had started getting tattooed at. And uh, I went in for a session and it was just empty. Like, where is everyone? You know, and uh, I learned the story. And then by the end of that session, I was having the conversation about, yeah, getting an apprenticeship. Ah, right yeah. place at the right time. Yep. That's funny. Like, my s- similar story for me getting into tattooing, I got a tattoo on my upper back. I drew the piece for my upper back for like a month or two. Mm-hmm. And I was convinced it was the greatest piece of art ever yeah. drawn by a human on the face of the earth. <laughs> and my whole goal was to make my back look like Anthony Kiedis. Oh, no. Because Anthony yeah. Kiedis had uh, that big uh, Northwest Indian yeah. Uh, bird. Yeah. I drew like an Indian face, but the face was too, actually two fish in the eyes of the fish or the trippy. eyes of the Indian. So <laughs> trippy. And then the hair came off and the hair turned into roses and it was all like super fine line. And so I drove around until I said, you know, back then that shops would brighten the window. We do fine line tattoos, you know? And then I fa- finally found this dude and he did the same thing. He's like, you want it just like that? I'm like, I'm like, he's like, I think we should. I'm like, no, no, no. You do it like that. You, your sign says fine line. Those are fine lines, right? Single needle. You do single needle. I don't know why. He, I don't even think he used a single needle. I think he did the whole thing with like a five round or something. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do on you. Yep, yep. Just sit down there, kid. You know, and I got this big yeah. thing. And I've had it lasered. I've had it covered up. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so, but uh, same I was just going to ask if you wanted to compare first tattoos. Yeah. You know, I'd have to find a picture of it. It turned into a blob. Okay. I mean, it was so condensed and yeah. so much going on after 10 years. It was just a big, black, muddy mess. Yeah. Um, so, lesson learned. But lesson it did. Learned. Same like you. It was Listen like, to your tattoo artist right what's that that? is that the lesson listen to your tattoo artist yeah listen to your profession i don't know what this guy would have done if i gave him free reign he was no (laughs) superstar (laughs) so who knows but yeah nowadays definitely listen to your tattoo artist if you found a good one listen to them there's a lot of good ones now you you know those days of whoever's in whoever's open and near you those days are gone you know yeah no i mean if you've gotten through the trouble of going through instagram or whatever you know comparing quality of artists this and that drawn i mean a city over let alone another state you know i mean you're paying top dollar like listen to the guy at least right i mean that's what you've sought him out for yes so but the same as you i was like i remember looking at liking it like thinking first of all i loved my tattoo and then i immediately was making plans for my next tattoo oh yeah no i was i was hooked from the from the but start I, and I, I was in the military at the time the coast guard and but i do for whatever reason there was a firewall in my head that would not allow me to even consider the idea of being a tattoo artist it was like oh that there i mean this guy was a biker dude i'm like that's i'm not one of those people like i can't be a part of that world and and i had you know other experiences with other tattooers and and a, I don't know. I got out of the military, and all, I don't. Know, I just one day I was. I remember I was clean. I was staying at my father-in-law's house because he was trying to sell the place. He's like, just make keep it clean, and I was cleaning it. I was out in the backyard cleaning the pool. And I swear, like I, I remember it to this day, like a bolt of lightning, because I was re- doing the whole day after day. Like, what am I going to do with my life? I'm not in the military. I'm going to go to art school, um, and then I started talking to people in art schools, and and I didn't like what they were telling me. You know, they were just like, "Oh, if you're going to be a graphic designer, this is the type of work you're going to be doing. Oh, if you're going to be an illustrator, this is you have to do this for ten years to earn your way to do that." And I'm like, "Whoa, that sounded good on paper, but that looks kind of like I don't like that job either." So mm-hmm. I was just confused, and but like a bolt of lightning, I was I'll never forget. I was scrubbing that pool, and all of a sudden, it was just like a, almost like a voice. And you say, hear people say that it really was kind of like a voice. Something just said. Be a tattoo artist, dumbass. <laughs> and I remember just being like, ding. And it all clicked into place like a puzzle. I'm like, wait a second. You can be a tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. And and you won't be like those dudes you've met in those shops. You'll be a new type of tattoo artist. And I'll bet you the world would like that. I'll bet you people, my friends, would like to be tattooed by a guy like me. You know? And then and, and from there it went. And I found an apprenticeship. My apprenticeship yeah. stories are you got lucky. You you did it the right way. You bounced around till you found a place where you fit in. I didn't. I went out and forced my way into the industry, <laughs> which meant I landed in three different apprenticeships, all full of oh, drugs hard. and chaos and yeah. violence and be, being robbed. And I, those are my stories. But but eventually, yeah, made it through, and here we both are. So our our stories are sort of similar in that way. Yeah, it really was right place at the right time. You know, I didn't have to, you know, uh, get 
I mean, I can't say that I wasn't rejected. It wasn't the first shop that I ever walked into. But, yeah, like, you know, most people you walk in, like, are you guys hiring? You know, you just kind of get that sort of blank stare from the counter person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it didn't, definitely didn't go anywhere. But uh, it helped a lot to have a, a relationship that I was cultivating by just being a client of this studio. Oh, yeah. You know, my dad was a client. In fact, before me, he oh, went and got okay. tattooed by Jen, Jen McClellan. She's, she's, she actually, she's my mentor. And uh, he got tattooed by her and brought me to this shop. And that's when I met, you know, that, that group of people. And that was, that was, that was the start. And, and, and you know, it never really shut off after that. It was 10 years of working at that place. Mm-hmm. And then Nina was born. And then I went just kind of solo for maybe five years or so yeah five years or so and then uh and then i met you came down here wow and now you've been joke. tattooing for 19 years yeah so i've been here at guru for like four years now so when you, right? when you so okay you're getting tattooed you love tattoos you get offered the apprenticeship i mean was it this was it was love already for you you were already oh, yeah. in love with you were already in your mind like i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna be a fucking tattooer and yeah. Then, well, it wasn't really an offered apprenticeship so much. It was. It was like uh, they needed front staff to keep the place clean. Right. So I and I needed a job. You know, I needed mm-hmm. something to be legitimate. You know, af- after having you know quit hockey and then went to art school and it's not really going anywhere. You know, I I did had a couple like graphic design jobs, but yeah, like you, mm-hmm. it was just like, man, this sucks. Like I don't feel like an artist at all. You know, like this is this is boring. This is. So I started bartending, you know, just odd stuff, mm-hmm. construction jobs and whatnot. And uh, yeah, like even just tracing Tattoo Flash, which was mm-hmm. a big part of her apprenticeship, was, yeah, just so much fun, man. I could just trace fucking Sailor Jerry Tattoo Flash all day. And like, like this is my job. Okay, I mean, I wasn't getting paid, so it's hard to really call it a job. But I still felt like I was, you know, I was earning something uh, of value that I knew would be good for me later, later down the road. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it worked out, you know, I mean, I talk about, yeah, like designing your life to work around what you, how you want it to be. I mean, that is definitely a beautiful part of tattooing is, you know, we are, we are our own bosses, you know, we, we, we make our own schedules and it, I mean, if you could really cultivate it the way you want, you know, you get to do the kinds of illustrations that you want to do or work around the type of people that you want to work around, you know, I mean, it's all in your it's all in your hands really and if you didn't if you don't go anywhere or do anything with it i mean you'd have no one to blame but yourself you know and if you really do capitalize on everything that's in front of you you know i mean i think there's a lot to there's a lot to get out of it as an independent you know contractor right you know because uh, tattooing as a craft is one thing and then being an, an artist or us these days now as an influencer or whatever i mean that's like a whole separate thing you know mm really just learning how to connect to your audience you know mm-hmm. trying to connect to the people that like what you do and putting it out there for them you know because i think you're right i and i think what i heard in that was authenticity yeah you know if you're authentic and uh i mean there is the chance that your authentic expression of art nobody enjoys at all sure but yeah. if you're authentically doing something whether it be the guy i saw it was pretty kind of cool he would get the client i think he even had plastic on the floor and he takes like i think a bottle of tattoo ink and yeah just kind of like squirts it across the guy's chest and splatters down onto his hand and adds a little another splash and then they let it i think maybe it gets dry and then he just gets out a big mag mm-hmm. and he just tattoos it you know? yeah. yeah but point is you know i'm assuming that guy that's his authentic He's into it. And yeah. He's found people that are into it. They're really I into it. I think the trap yeah. is with this a lot of traps with social media, but one of them is to find out what is trending and mm. do it, mm. which is not authentic. It's just right. following in like, oh, okay, everybody wants um, little ge- thinly lined geometric shapes. So that's my portfolio. Mm-hmm. And, and it might really be in your heart to do that, but I think there's just a ton of people. It's not in their heart to do that. They're just desperate to try to get business and they're just, you know, and, and it might work for a while, but I think what I've learned in my long journey is anything you do that's not authentic will eventually come back and burn you, sure. whether it be you being, maybe you're busy, but you're miserable yeah, and you're not fulfilled yep. or, or, you know, some other thing comes from it, but it's not going to last. You've got to find as an artist, well, in life, but it really, um, it's turbocharged in art. 
artists like do you have to be a super authentic manager of a Geico insurance office <laughs> probably not you mm-hmm. could probably just get the job done and mm-hmm. they'll probably promote you and you'll get your retirement package in 25 years sure. we are in a different game our game really pushes forward the idea of of true expression from the heart authenticity mm-hmm. so and i think again back to my point social media is kind of creating this situation where people cannot be that anymore they can just be like okay look at that that's what everyone's getting tattooed mm-hmm. that's what i do and then i'm just i say that out loud to the audience for young tattooers that might be listening I'd be careful there. Yeah. I would maybe do it to get pay the bills, but at night when you're at home, start working out what it is you do like to tattoo. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's it right there. Is, uh, end of the day, if you're not having fun and being very ju- genuine with what you're making, it, it will just come off as, you know, yeah, it's just going to it's gonna fall flat. You know, you got to be having some genuine fun to cross over into, like, some interesting unique even you know i mean for, for what i do is it's like it's not terribly new or unique at all you know the neo trad style i feel that like genre I, isn't right and but so your way of doing it i think is incredibly unique. well that that is incredibly humbling and flattering you know but i mean as an artist all you see is like you know i i just i, I thinking about all of my favorite tattoos i've seen over the course of my life and and then you know everything that I reference while I'm tattooing, it can be hard, you know, it's kind of like uh, having body body dysmorphia disorder where you're looking at your art in a skewed lens as opposed to the way that everyone else looks at what you draw, you know? Um, so it can be it can be hard to really recognize your own style, you know? Mm-hmm. But, right, I get you know, that. as long as you're having fun, you know, and, and that, was, that was told to me by a guy that... Uh, made a lot of sense you know made a ton of sense like don't force it you know like you really got to get in there and have some genuine fun with it some one way or another you know and if you're not then it's it's going to fall short you know on every aspect like the tattoo design you know won't be as good as it could be the client's experience not anywhere near as good as it could be because your own energy you're bringing to the table you know, almost shines brighter than the tattoo, you know, like they, the other, agree the other that. human that is inflicting pain on, mm-hmm. on the person as, as a client, like that is, they're going to remember that more than anything, you know, mm-hmm. as a tattoo, we get our new tat and we love it. We look at it every day, all day long. And then little by little, we stop looking at it. We stop looking at it. And then it just kind of becomes a part of our body. But what we don't forget is that, that feeling that we had with that mm-hmm. person, whether we felt bad or good or scared or whatever, um, you know, having that genuine moment is like gonna it makes the difference for sure and, and that's and that's what keeps you know that's what keeps me busy i think you know having those genuine moments and then they tell their relatives and they i tattoo their relatives or their friends you know and it doesn't convey on social media with a following but it does you know you do have these great relationships with people where they're still coming back after 10 years and adding on to their tattooing or bringing you their you know how to a dad I tattooed and his daughter was just a fucking baby. And then I just recently tattooed this kid. He brought, he brought his daughter in to, for me to tattoo her cool. first tattoo. It was a pretty cool, pretty cool experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, I have tattoos or a couple tattoos on my body that I avoid looking at. Yeah. I, I subconsciously avoid looking at it because I remember who did that tattoo. Mm-hmm. And I remember how fucked up that day was right. and the people that were there. And I, it bums me out. Mm-hmm. I'm currently getting some of those things lasered off and covered. But yeah, I mean, be careful out there when you're tattooing people. Yeah. Like you're leaving them with a long lasting emotional, um, positive or negative kind of um, imprint. Imprint, you know? imprint yeah. would be a good way to put Forever. it. Yeah. And to take that seriously. They, they might not, they're not going to remember your name, most likely. I mean, right. They might, but. They may forget it, but they will not forget like the way they felt when they were in your chair getting poked, yeah. for sure. You know, and that's um, one of the beauties yeah. of our of our yeah. craft is if you do someone right, yeah, and treat them right, and they yeah. get a good vibe from you, they're yours for life. Yeah, you know, they're just so loyal. Totally, you yeah. Know, tattoo clients, and that's probably the best advice for young tattooers. You know, have fun with whatever you're making. You know, and be kind to the people that are that are paying you. You know, not that complicated. Yeah, is it? it really isn't. You know, I mean. <laughs> You don't get to be who 
you want to be without those people letting you tattoo them you know Mm -hmm. it's just plain and simple like we are only tattoo artists because people ask us to tattoo them and so yeah so uh yeah you know once i start feeling like man i'm not my drawings aren't cool enough or like i don't have enough of a following or this or that like it, it i've gotten good at just like kind of wiping those feelings down with like okay let's focus on what's really what i'm really doing here in, in my life and immediately i feel better you know i'm stoked you know that's a little buddhism yeah. right there yeah you know, i mean i bringing I, yourself into I the used present to be, moment totally I, and that's what exactly what it is because t- i used to get really bummed you know because i mean i was at the start of instagram and just single-handedly watching like people blow up and feeling like that's somehow a reflection of you know how much i put into my job you know and it bothered me for a while until i don't know it took a little while of just i think talking to people really helps you know talking to other meeting other tattooers that you look up to or whatever tattooing in general in general you know just forgetting everything and just focusing on your job Mm -hmm. you know uh 19 years later like yeah i don't don't care so much you know i just i'm happy and i still feel lucky you know every time i get to to work with someone still feel really really stoked that this is my job and um you know it's hard enough to just focus on doing really great design work and then a solid clean tattooing and i just want to punch out after that and you know i, I don't care about the rest you know that client is stoked you know stoked enough to keep coming back and then bring people to me like that's it that's that's all i care about you know i like your philosophy keeping it that simple it really is that simple yeah yeah that's why we all started doing it it's what made us smile in the beginning and yeah i guess we've been kind of dancing around the new world of tattooing with social media's mm-hmm. involvement and how it's changed that and i like what you've done with it though you've you've definitely you did the right thing you just sunk back into the original epitus of why it is you were yeah. here like i don't got to make my designs cooler i just got to make i got to have fun making them and sure they got to be better every time you make something right especially as an illustrator mm-hmm. the kind of d- design work that we do you know if you're going to draw a hand for example you know you either have to have a great reference tool or be really good at illustrating hands you know and so that that sort of thing is you're, you can always get better at you know mm-hmm. but as far as like making tattoo designs like i feel like that's kind of se- that's different it's a little separate you know mm-hmm. i mean you don't necessarily have to be the the best artist the best illustrator to be a great tattooer at all you know um you just gotta yeah again have fun well there's just so much more to tattoo like if you just talk about illustrator or the ability to draw that's one dimension of tattooing because then when you get into tattooing you're talking about well the big ones to me are composition Mm -hmm. you know you could draw the coolest hand ever and put it in the wrong place on the body it just doesn't yeah. along there absolutely um and then you know composition that's the biggest one and then just understanding what works you know what you can work out on your ipad mm-hmm. and what will work out in someone's bleeding skin are two separate worlds two huge separation huge there. and yeah. i've i've seen younger tattooers that draw some wicked shit and then their portfolio is just medium mm-hmm. you know and yeah. so there is a there's more at there's more to it <laughs> to get to get cool art onto someone's skin is a there's a little few more things you got to figure out than just how to draw something cool and back mm-hmm. to your other point like saying that to yourself like i got to make my thing cooler i don't need to do that i just need to have fun doing this drawing today mm-hmm. great advice because i think the trap there is when you start saying to yourself i want to make this cooler what you're kind of saying is well then who's cool mm. and then you got to go find those guys and then you can accidentally start leaning towards the what is the coolest thing out there today and then it's also only ever going to be as cool as what they made and which doesn't make it cool well, at all not, they already did it you and, know and you're not you're becoming less authentic now yeah absolutely you're now you yeah. don't even know it it might be subconscious but you're suddenly drawing like this guy and these dudes in spain or whoever and you're just yeah. Yeah, that's another trap. We got it with our trap. ability to reference everyone mm-hmm. in the world at the touch of our fingers. And I, I see that too. I see a lot of homogenization in yeah. tattooing sure. where um, it's like, oh, you are doing Sam Clark tattoos. Right. And they're really nice. But that's that's looks just like his work. Like mm-hmm. I was following him years before you were tattooing. Right. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and that guy's maybe he's busy because we don't have to fly to Australia to get a Sam Clark tattoo. We can get it up in Los Angeles from this kid. 
But again, back to what we were saying, I think there's a trap there because if it isn't really you and it really isn't coming from a let's have fun and be creative like a, like a child, like, mm-hmm. like be a kid again. Um, and it's just not, it's not going to be fulfilling and it'll burn you. So just, yeah, that's a big one too. And for me and anybody, like it's difficult to stay authentic when the amount of tattoos I look at just on accident, like I go in there to check my DMs, you know, I got, I, you know, I own Guru Tattoo. I, I run this podcast. There's just business reasons. I've got to open that fucking app up. And sure as shit. And there's even business reasons for me to go through the the page, uh, the explore page, just just to find random rad tattooers to be like, hey, what well, you want to come do a guest spot? How about you? Oh, I'd love to have you on my show. So I'm kind of like working, mm-hmm. but along the way, I'm absorbing. Mm-hmm. I'm absorbing all these other people's stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've caught myself several times after I was really turned on by a specific style of art. Um, what's that guy named Alex Grimm? Uh, you might not know him. He's a Russian dude. He does these really dark. Yeah, yeah, it's all black work. Yeah, all black um, work. Really yeah. cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. Ha- that was a, a kind of a light bulb moment. I was just perving out on that dude's page. I'm like, yeah. wow. It was, I'd never seen anyone tattoo. And then, like, it's a month later, and I finished this, what I think is the coolest drawing I've ever done. And I'm like, you just drew an Alex Grimm piece, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I immediately I didn't post it and yeah. show anybody and just took note of that. Like, yeah. wow, mm-hmm. how how slippery the slope is, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, that, that's another trick. It is, that, it is a trap, you know, especially when you are just trying to, you know, end of the day, it, you know, you have clients that you want to take care of, you want those clients to be stoked. And, uh, I can't say that, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think my portfolio is fairly diverse enough so that people, when I tell people like, okay, well look at my tattoos and, you know, show me the ones that, that you like to see the the ones that uh you would like your tattoo to look at and you know i mean there's like a whole bunch of shit on there you know so i mean they don't really know what that means you know they just they want you know a nice looking tattoo and oftentimes i get you know i'm told that like oh you do great color and i'm like oh, okay well i didn't make the colors personally you know i, I put them in the skin and in, in my opinion everyone that i work with has great technical skills they saturate they have clean work you know mm-hmm. you know unanimously um maybe my choice of colors separates That's you know can separate you a little bit you know um but uh you know at the end of the day though more especially after 19 years I, yeah, that the coloring you know is great and all it's like it's the it's the icing on the cake for sure but it's gonna you know it, it's not as substantial as like the the bones of the tattoo Right. You know the the black line work and the the black the positive and negative space. You know the readability the of the tattoo. Yeah, so you know the it's great that you know I have colors, but I mean people have to understand that like on social media they're seeing you know best case scenario. You know they're seeing like a fresh tattoo on a mm. pale skinned person done with like great lighting. You know it's and probably it's like, had something done to it on the photo. You know edited it slightly. Too. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean even you know I mean. I, I'd say polarization photo, you know, what is it? Uh, like the polarized glare filter. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it, even that is can kind of show some, you know. It's not truthful. Not truthful results, right. exactly. Because right. it kind of just like, it takes that skin that could be even all beat up or whatever and just washes it blacked out, you know, and makes it look super clean. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's fucking it's 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 really it's hard not to draw tattoos that look like your favorite tattooers yeah. you know um it's hard not to draw tattoos that are straight up a mimic but then also someone's inspired by a tattooer you could see okay they're inspired by a certain style of tattooing or certain certain tattoo individual and you could see the similarities you know but then some artists are managed to like separate themselves mm-hmm. even if it's slightly you know mm-hmm. Um, that's like a really tricky thing, you know? I mean, how, how do you go about drawing lady heads and flowers without being inspired by like, you know, Chris Prem or, you know, mm-hmm. Bully or any of those guys, right. you know, it's impossible, you know, and Lord Lips, like they've all done those tattoos, you know, they mm-hmm. in, in all of the ways that you can make them look nice, you know? And so, but there is a way. Yeah. Yeah. And there is. It. And, I mean, I just had Matt Tischler on his biggest influence, Lou's lips. Yeah, yeah. But look at Matt's work and look at Lou's work. Yeah. They're different for they're sure. Totally different. Yeah. But you can see the inspiration. Yeah. yeah. 
but you know yeah like not focusing on one individual so much helps a lot you know like having a a varied appreciation for different yeah different artists doing that thing and then even you just going back to the classics in, in general you know looking at classical artwork classical tattoo artwork classical you know paintings and stuff like that is that's where you should really get your you know that's what i visual do. inspiration i try to make from, a lot yeah. of my perving out on instagram with like a lot i follow a lot of digital artists and yeah. painters and stuff non-tattooers basically yeah because yeah. yeah. they're doing novel things artistically that aren't showing up in the tattoo industry mm-hmm. as much and uh, I just feel it's safer territory mm-hmm. than if I just sit there and look at sure. a single guy like that Alex Graham story, you know, and then I'm accidentally yeah. drawing his thing right. in my work. Yeah, another good advice. Yeah, get your inspiration from novel places, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, nature. <laughs> you know, go out and actually look at Earth. Like, that's where the, that's the original inspiration. Yeah, go outside. <laughs> stop. Just stop looking at pictures altogether. Yeah. And just go outside for, like, you know, a period of time. Pick up a fucking bug and... Get Dude, it. look at it. <laughs> you know. I was driving this RV, right, and thinking to myself, like, this is just, this is a trip. It's like, it's like a nature channel right in front of me, except it's real. It's like <laughs> HD. the RV's got this big wraparound window, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's, it's the most HD, you know, right. <laughs> we'll ever get <laughs> right there. And it's all right there. It's like, wow, like, trees have this pattern that they follow, like, how many times have I had to draw a plant life of some sort and just couldn't get it right, couldn't get a leaf pattern correct or whatever, and you know, not understanding why I can't get this to look right. Uh, so I'll re- resort back to some tattoo you saw or this tattoo, and it's like, well, you, all you're doing is making a tattoo that looks like that tattoo, and mm-hmm. just go outside and look at the leaves, and yeah. you start to see, back you to know, the source. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I'm after that trip. I'm I'm like revitalized where I want to go draw some stuff and I feel like I have a better understanding of how nature grows you know and I, cool. I want to draw it yeah how would you describe your tattoos like how uh, illustrative I guess yeah. uh, neo-traditional you know yeah. is like a generalized term I think you know I, or, I feel like the word psychedelic could be in there maybe yeah I mean, I mean you, you gotta maybe definitely have some you know sur- very surreal surreal yeah okay I'll take that for sure because I, I mean I I dabbled a little bit, and you know. I was going to ask a... you that next because I look at your <laughs> art. I'm like, I bet you he's dabbled. Yeah, for sure. You can see it showing up. Definitely um, having this, you know, feeling of like something bigger than me. You know that like, you just can't put your finger on it. You know, mm-hmm. but you know it's there. You know, and you know some some certain drugs kind of bring that out in people. And it doesn't always have to be drugs though. Like just a life experience can make you mm-hmm. ponder on those sorts of ideas. You know, and you just think about it long enough, and I think it starts to come out in the way that you draw and the, you know, so, uh, but I, I don't know. I think it, it, neo-traditional is, is a great term because I still very much try to, um, focus on like traditional elements of tattooing, mm-hmm. you know, with if less and less, for example, if I incorporate water into a tattoo where there was a time before where all I wanted to do was make the coolest, like reflective, realistic looking water you know and I, I, I scrapped that that whole idea like i just they've seen these tattoos age and the, what really looks good over time you know mm-hmm. um that's where the traditional aspect comes in you know black lines you know s- more simple designs you know mm-hmm. um even you know character creation you know when i'm trying to draw a character for the tattoo concept um you know, resorting back to the way that they were traditionally drawn, it really makes a lot of sense, you know, mm-hmm. for a tattoo. It does. It really does. You you know, it doesn't mean it has to be, like, super old school looking at all. You know, it's just that you're kind of, like, utilizing some foundations that traditional tattooing uses, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're adding some new illustration to that. That's you know? so true. Like, when... And this, I'll, I'll just say it was me. I, in my early, early years of tattooing, just because back then, this is again 30 years ago, the guys I worked around, they were, I told you already, they're what they were. But another thing they were is they really didn't give a shit if I was doing good tattooing or not. It was more about like, just go to work, put your money over there. Yeah. And uh, so I was kind of set free to do some dumbass stuff. And basically i thought i was going to reinvent tattooing sure yeah before was, understanding like like yeah i got i always bring up this koi i did that went well we'll call it viral although viral back then was magazines but right. it went viral right. i did this koi fish 
sleeve on a guy, and I do my version of a koi. I put eyelashes on this one. <sighs> Big ass human eye. Fin on the back of the fish is far, far, way too far forward. Yeah. You know, if you know classic koi is where the fin starts back behind the gill. Yeah. Mine's up towards the forehead. It's still a kind of a cool drawing, but I guess that was that when that went viral, and then I did three or four more of them, and I don't remember exact day, but I remember it hitting me one day like, oh, I you can tweak things, but you can't tweak them until you understand the the core of it first. Mm, yeah. Once you understand how to really draw a koi fish, like a traditional Japanese painting, learn that and then tweak. Yeah. And then extend or add yeah. whatever yeah. or take away. And then yeah. I set, I changed my whole game and I started learning how to draw everything traditionally. I was yeah. working on dragons and a lot of Japanese stuff. But, yeah. um, and then bringing my little twists and turns yeah. in there. So another, I guess I would say as advice to a younger tattooer, get those core understandings down first. Yeah, man. Then start twisting them up in yeah. your special absolutely. way. Yeah. Absolutely. You got to run before you could walk, right? Right. And so you got to... There's a reason why tattoos are, were made that way originally, and there's a reason why, like, you know, you, you go back and you look at your favorite tattooers, you know, just, like, really just look at what they're making. It's, like, way more simple than your brain thinks about it, you know. You recall your, one of your favorite tattoos. It, it is much more complicated in your imagination. You look at the actual photo, and it's so simple, you know, like, really simple stuff, you know, but it's just... The way some artists can lay out their compositions, they're so perfect and right and uh, accentuate, you know, the, the human anatomy that they're on. It's like they're, you know, they're perfect. They're, they're using all of the little aspects of tattooing and they've like checked each box, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, if you don't, if you don't, under, if you don't have any understanding for what makes classical tattooing look the way it does, then you're going to keep drawing gelatinous, shiny, splashing water that doesn't actually look like water it just looks like weird goop you know I, I did a lot of that back in the day for sure you know goopy goopy looking 3d water you know it's 3d oh man it fucking pops dude Let's fucking stick your finger in there it's like nah. <laughs> uh, nah. so, so true so true so I've, I've definitely come full circle i think and, and and resorting back to more and more just focusing on trying to make it simple and classical looking and in some way or another and there's always going to be that element of like psychedelicness or whatever illustration that i'm bringing to the table but um yeah more and more i try to use the, the classical concepts and implement them into like whatever tattoo someone's asking for you know someone's asking for anything really you know so it's not that i just only like making skulls i mean i'm i'm certainly down you know and if someone doesn't know what they want to put into a tattoo how about a skull sure uh <laughs> good starting point but you know by no means like i'm stoked just as stoked to uh, have some ask me to do an illustration of their cat and and leaves in the flower that's sick you know right. as long as they're like wanting me to design it in the way that i see best you know right right it can be your flavor your style your expression yeah yeah almost any subject matter for yeah. guys like us has I guess you, you called yourself like an illustration-based tattooer. I would say the same thing about me. I don't like the word new school or even neo-traditional. I, I don't know. I, it's, I, 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 I'm an illustrator. Yeah. Like I draw shit. I yeah. draw subject matter. Yeah. And then I make it into what can be tattooed as best I can. And in that, in that way, there is no subject matter that's off limits. That's right. There's, you probably couldn't name a single thing that you couldn't find a way to make it yours. Right. In, 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 in a cool way that looks like your art yeah you know yeah that's good that's good what about your um you know there's the routine like i i always wonder like your let's go through like what's your creative process like do you what's your schedule when do you draw when do you wake up when do you make time for your art and then your, your you know, how's that for you well um i feel like eh, tough question well you know it, it's really it depends. I feel like on what I got coming up, you know, uh, if it's, if I have some project coming up that it's very familiar waters, you know, mm. then I definitely always find it best to like not think about it at all. You know, um, I want to get in there with this person face to face, uh, 
you know, get to know like what they really like, you know, what they want, um, and start drawing some stuff right on the skin, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm gonna use a couple stencils for like the the more detailed or important parts of the design, but um, you know, having that thing created kind of on the spot in terms of like you know this part's going to be drawn or i've been working on like you know a face of this lady okay here's like an angry face here's a more pretty face you know and i might have a few things ready in that sense Mm -hmm. but none of it's like it's not like a finished design you know the finished design doesn't happen until we sit down and i put this little piece here and then i draw some connection stuff and then this and that and kind of organically you know, mm. um, cause I've drawn some really sick stuff that I, I am stoked on, you know, this draw, this drawing, this line drawing or whatever, just like s- obsessed over it to the point where I didn't feel like it was going to get any better, you know? And then of course, coming to making it a tattoo was an entirely different thing, you know, and it, it everything cool about the illustration didn't transfer over onto the skin, right. you know? And so... It, it's like I just wasted 20 hours of drawing, you know, for mm. for nothing when I ended up having to, like, do all that stuff, you know. So, I mean, for me, it's been working. You know, the more, the more understanding I have of large-scale tattooing, you know, the, the less I want to draw, <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> you want to do it live. I want it, I want it to really fit on that person's arm or their bicep and everyone is just so different you you know muscle mass you know everyone's body type is so different that like you know things are going to what is going to look nice on this person's arm like you got those like little you know those cutouts that we'll sometimes use on you know procreate Mm -hmm. for example you know it's just a generic arm like some fucking buff dude like (laughs) like, i don't have any clients that have an arm that looks like that i have like one (laughs) with like a buff like musky arm you know and everyone else is like it's totally different so the shape on this lady's arm is not going to work on this dude's arm that has like all these all these surface changes with all his you know i mean uh, i i agree with you and i do a bit probably less than you i lean a little more on the art i create and then i stencil a lot of it and then i get the pens out and yeah and figure it out from there I mean, the same i mean don't get me wrong i'm not freehanding like these whole all of it at all but i, I say there's like 50 50 like 50 yeah. percent stencil and then close everything wrap everything together you know bring it all together create all that flow that people like with like just getting it right on their skin yeah you know and and then uh you know and, th- and that is to say that this is a subject matter that i'm like comfortable with if right. someone's hitting me with something totally new well then yeah bro i'm like back to square one i'm like obsessing over learning how to draw you know the proper it it, whatever it is you know yeah and then uh once i have those drawings and i'm getting comfortable with making those drawings you know i'll probably have like a few of them it's still kind of this after that then it's still similar where like okay i'll show this this person like this drawing this drawing this drawing this one would fit kind of like this or this one would fit like that and then we're still gonna do some some freehand stuff kind of in between everything you know Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I've been having, I have great luck with this, and I don't know how many tattooers do this, but if I can get a squared off photo of a back or a square, you know, not taken from above, not taken from below, not from left to right, but just straight on with a, an arm, mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a woman, she stands there flaccid, and I get that picture, I bring it into my iPad, and I draw pretty much everything on that photo. It's amazing to me how well those stencils fit. Oh, yeah, sure. When I you know i haven't even met this person yet yeah and they show up and i've had a few back pieces as of as of late where i'm just like i can't believe how well that works it mm-hmm. fits their back because i had a photo of their mm-hmm. back and of course you get the pins out at the end and maybe you make some adjustments where it connects to the bottom of the butt cheek because it mm-hmm. you know when you roll over round objects it gets all muddled and it gets tw- twerked and everything mm-hmm. but generally speaking where i where i drew it on the on the ipad is where those things are landing sure. on that physical body yeah. yeah i mean i'm sure that's not news to many of you tattooers out there but it's still shocking to me how well that works. Yeah, I, mean, I think you know. Well, now granted, I don't have a lot of back clients, you know. So uh, backs are easier in that it's way. A, a little bit. It's a I mean, flat it's square. Kinda, basically. Yeah, yeah, arms right? are, are arms, tube. Are, arms are, and legs, man. Like they're they cylinders. Can be so different, and everyone's like the body fat versus muscle. You know, it's just like it makes the shape of legs and arms like quite a bit different. Not to mention size. Like some big giant dude wants to get an estimate for his sleeve. 
I just got finished working on some 115 pound girl. It's like, if I think about that tattoo in terms of like, well, how's that going to compare to you? Like it doesn't, you know, like it could be twice as much. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I feel bad for the big, big guys. Oh man, dude, so much skin to work on. I've got a couple of big dudes. I bet you their back to kneecaps took me hundred over a hundred hours. Yeah. And I did one of my favorite back pieces on a 115 pound girl. I think we had that whole back piece done in 35 hours. Mm-hmm. Both look amazing on a picture on Instagram. Yeah. But this guy had to sit through twice as much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a bummer for them. It's good to be little. If you're little out there. Get tattooed. And, yeah. Get, get, get tattooed. <laughs> you're going to save tons of money. Yeah. So do, what, when do you draw, though? Are you a night guy or a morning guy? Um, these days, definitely like a, a, a daytime, like, a you know after breakfast after mm. uh, after a little bit of you have a kid? physical exertion of sorts you know go surf then, come home draw go to work yeah yeah like, is that the, like the perfect day right for you? right there in midday if it's too late in the day i feel like my brain's not working you know if it's too early in the day then i'm thinking about too much other shit you know ah, you're in the middle zone there right there in the middle i'm not i'm if i have a really project i'm passionate about yeah. i purposely tell my wife i'm going to bed at 9 tonight and yeah. i i get up at 4 a.m. And like 5 a.m. Well, I guess my your house probably too. But once the family gets up, yeah, yeah, I can't. It's the only quiet time. Yeah, it's perfectly quiet. Yeah. That being said, yeah, I will sometimes stay up late. Like once, for that quiet. Time. Once something gets going, especially, and I don't have to think so much about doing it, I just got to kind of start filling in. Then yeah, I'll stay up late and mm-hmm. just let it, let it roll for sure. But I feel like there's that like moment like in creating tattooing you got to really have all f- cylinders firing you know mm-hmm. you got to that's what caffeine's for yeah <laughs> and nicotine yeah i do the well, mints by the way i don't smoke well or you'll like, never catch me smoking feel feel like <laughs> <laughs> and if um, you did see me smoking shut the fuck up bro. <laughs> Aaron, i've never seen him smoking <laughs> No, that's that's. I thought you might say that. And you have a kid, and you know, I think when we. And she's a young kid. She's right. She's right at that age. She needs a lot of attention. You know. Right. Once she's up, good luck. Yeah. Totally. You know, working. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, and all all these uh, late night or evening tattooers are all single dudes, so or women too. I shouldn't say dudes. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They don't have children. Is what I'm getting at. (laughs) Is usually the case. Let me ask you to switch it up a little bit. So, what about you're married? How long have you been married? Fifteen years. 15 years, it's yeah. quite a while. Yeah. Um, what about marriage, work balance? And when I say work, I mean m- w- your wife being married to a tattoo artist, a creative. Yeah. How's that been for you? Uh, she's very patient. Woman. <laughs> yeah. She's, Start there. She's patient in, in that sort of way where she's had to, yeah, put up with me and my mood swings and my, you know, mm-hmm. Obsession. obsessions you know multiple obsessions sometimes you know um gosh you know if she wasn't the type of person that was um also very you know driven and determined to be who she wants to be you know she has a career she uh you know if she wasn't that kind of person it definitely wouldn't have worked you know mm-hmm. if you're in a relationship where you get too much energy from the individual and like the one or one, the person has a job or career or whatever hobby that is obsessed that they obsess over and the other person only obsesses over you. Well, I mean, that's, that's, it's never going to work. And I mean, I'd been in every other relationship for me before that was just like that, where it was like fucking just like yeah. explosive. Sure. You yeah. know, and, yeah. but, uh, you know, just too, too obsessed over, you know, that simplistic idea of just being together and not putting enough attention in mm-hmm. to ourselves, you know? And so, uh, it's worked out because of that. I think, you know, mm-hmm. um, you got the right girl basically. Yeah. Yeah. She's, and you know, and she's obviously I have 17 years that you've proven that. And she's not a tattooer in any way. doesn't mm-hmm. have any tattoos. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I didn't it, know that. She's not an artist. Well, you're like the only, my wife either. We're rare. Yeah. Tattoo right? artist with a Often wife times. with zero tattoos. Yeah, is, totally, man. I think you're the only other person maybe I've ever met. Yeah. I, I, I just assume she had a little something. She does, you know, she does have a tiny one that she got when she was like 18. It's like, I've always respected the fact that she wasn't interested in tattoos yeah. and at the same time was fully accepting of me. And, you know, it's, it's definitely 
been a curve for her where she's had to ex- accept. It's a lot of it's just acceptance, you know. I mean, I was a brand new tattooer when we met, and I've just continued to be more obsessed over this shit and get more tattooed on myself, mm-hmm. which is probably a biggest thing. I mean, I couldn't imagine like if I didn't like tattoos and the way they looked on people, and my my significant others start covering their their body in it. I mean, that's that's gonna make you feel a certain way, you know. Mm. Um, so maybe she does. I don't know. <laughs> maybe she secretly thinks they're fucking gross. I mean, I, I don't have the best tattoos either, man. I've got like, fucking <laughs> trash tattoos, <laughs> drunk tats, you know, just... I've got some good ones for sure, but, like, not nearly the amount of thought that I put into my clients' tattoos, you know? <laughs> like, I, yeah, for sure. So I wish that I had better tattoos on my body for her to look at, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah Me but, too. <laughs> but God bless her, you know, rough enough. My latest tattoo I got... Uh, my wife started crying when she saw it. Just yeah. straight up started crying. It was a joke tattoo. Do you want to talk about that tattoo? I have before. Okay. <laughs> I, I went up sure. to Montana and got a party <laughs> with my son. And we were out snowmobiling. And at night, we'd rip some little little party tats. I ended up with a little, I call it a French jellyfish on my Ooh, uh, ankle. There you go. Which That's it's actually, name. it's a penis. I, I still it's, get a kick out of it. It makes me smile every time. But man, it's a hard. Cried. It's a hard throbbing cock. <laughs> It's actually kind of limp. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, you know, some some bend down that way. You know, it's kind of half masked. <laughs> but she cried. I mean, I remember. Her, I felt bad. I thought she at oh, least be like, she did, oh, she genuinely cried. Genuinely oh, cried. My God. I'm sorry. And I was like, I switched from laugh. I was like, ha, ha, check it out, huh? To like, I'm sorry. Oh no, sorry. She's like, you're getting that fucking lasered. She still said she kind of stopped talking about it because I'm not, I'm not getting it lasered. I guess she's not as much into your feet, I guess these days, huh? She yeah, just, right. put your socks on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get this fucking thing. Well, that kind of reminds me of my next question because I, I do live in a nice community. and My kids go to good schools, yeah. and uh, I'm like my dad. neighborhood. I'm, the, I'm the only oh, yeah. heavily tattooed yeah, dad at my school. Yeah. That this like I was at one of these I don't know some booster meeting or something and I, I suddenly realized I'm just I got my you know my leg up on top of uh, you know when you cross your legs and I've got uh, sandals on and mm-hmm. I and I'm just doing my thing and suddenly I realized that the the whole room just staring right at that I'm like whoa and I put my <laughs> leg down and kind of like it's bad enough you're heavily tattooed dude you don't need to show these poor people who know nothing about your industry that you have a dick tattooed on your ankle you know <laughs> but I was gonna ask you that like uh, how because that that has never been an issue in my world because I do live in a world that's sep- it's really away from tattoo world. Yeah, it's sure. just a it's a very um, urban neighborhood with yeah. regular folks who were what you'd expect. They all went to college. They all they were financiers and you know real estate people. And, and then there's me and um, and I've I felt. Judge, I've definitely felt awkward in that in those environments. Now I've never had a direct moment where I'm like, "Whoa, I just got not invited." I think because of who I am. <laughs> but maybe I win people over with my personality. But what about you? Have you had any of that where you're like, "Shit, I got to go to this." You, you're so tattooed, you can't even put on the long sleeve shirt. I know. You know, I I think that uh, it, some communities that we lived in since we moved down to San Diego when we first moved here, we rented in an area. Uh, really great schools, you know, that was just always our main concern for, with our daughter, um, is just trying to get her into like a good public school system. You know, it's why people, you know, pay to live in a, in a expensive area, you know, usually it's good schools, good location, you know, access to the things you want, whatever. So, um, but yeah, in, in that neighborhood, I definitely felt a lot of, a lot of visual heat, you know, people mm-hmm. like just super uncomfortable with it, you know, and maybe not uncomfortable. Maybe that was just my perception of what I thought they were thinking. But then also me being fairly like introverted and not super outgoing definitely added to that fact where I wasn't exactly interested in like, you know, going over and, and uh, you know, putting them at ease, putting them at ease, <laughs> you know, I mean, what if they could think whatever they want. I, I did. I didn't care, you know, and if I ever had the chance, of course, when I'm face to face and I'm meeting someone, I'm, they'll, they'll know right away that I'm fairly, you know, kind person, soft spoken or whatever. And, you know, not out to like threaten their kids or, you know, get their right. kids in a gang or something. <laughs> yeah, it's right. like so uh, I remember during COVID, actually, the neighborhood we were living in, um, I was I was stoked because like honestly, all the kids would are like coming over to our part of the the apartment lot, you know, and uh, like 
fucking got like a bunch of these kids into skateboarding and like drawing graffiti. You were the cool dad. I was the cool dad. And then they got all, and I'm sure their parents are thinking like, oh my God. Do we want like, our kids hanging out over the Sweeney's? You know, it was just, you know, some pretty, pretty innocent stuff, man. Just a little skateboarding, some, some drawing on those skateboards, you know, some, yeah. my daughter is definitely a big fan of me and she draws all over herself and she draws on her friends and she might've gotten in trouble like one or two times, I think at school for like, you know, using permanent marker, you know, <laughs> but, you know, she's, maybe she'll yeah. be a tattoo artist. Uh, uh, My kids maybe. are not showing that kind of interest no? in me. Yeah. They did. It bugs me. Like that. I'm like, <laughs> you guys, I'm cool. They like, I, yeah. My oldest will just be like, like so her friends will come over and, be, and they're interested in me. Like, oh, you do tattoos? And as soon as she hears it, she's like, uh, enough, enough, dad. Um, anyways, guys, <laughs> let's go over here. I'm like, hey, your friends, I'm, I'm the cool dad. Right, yeah. Aren't you proud of me? And she, I don't know what. She's not art, the most artistic. My little one, maybe. We'll see. But you might have a little tattoo artist on your hand. Maybe. There. We'll see. I mean, I think that would be so be cool, things. though, yeah. as a father. I think. To, to, to give that craft to your daughter. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I would teach her regardless you know i mean i i mean what makes you i mean if she wants to be a career tattooer that, that's one thing if she wants to know how to tattoo i mean i don't you know i don't give that you know i wouldn't just like teach anybody who just wanted to know i mean not, not she'd have to earn it you like earn anybody it. else yeah. yeah but um she would definitely be able to do it i think she did give me a little tattoo i think a year or two years ago oh, okay. i brought her in and I, I held her hand through the whole thing but um Dude, she was, yeah, she was so stoked to be here. I, you know, I think it might have something to do with being an only child as well, you know? Mm. Um, she doesn't have that other sibling to kind of bounce off of. Right. You know, she's just got... She's Daddy's just like, girl. Yeah, very much, so... Well, cool, man. Well, I don't know. I We don't have all day. Maybe we'll wrap it up. I just wanted to... Um, well, let me ask you. I mean, where are you headed next? What What's on... Is it just more of the same? Keep improving? No, or outside of tattooing, you got any dreams or goals? I know you just bought your house, so you're probably... What's up with you? Where, where are you headed? Ah, uh, dude, I want to buy a motorhome after that whole oh, trip, bro. Like, you got the... Get a Sprinter. Something, you know, I was thinking that the whole way. In fact, our next plan is to uh, rent a different sort of, you know... Try a different style. A different style and see how we like that because there are pluses and minuses to all, all of them, you know? Um, but ultimately, yeah, just, you know, that that, that feeling of like... You're not in a hurry to get anywhere, you know. You're just fucking got the bug. A little bit, yeah. yeah. It'd be pretty sick to like be able to um, just rent our house out to someone and like hit the road for a year and just go fucking wherever and not even have a destination, but like you know, just go visit people we haven't been able to see, mm. go see places we haven't seen yet, you know. That's um, cool. And yeah, and being a tattooer, I've initially, you know, like a lot of tattooers, I feel like have it in their mind and I did too that you know I would take my tattooing and be able to travel and work at the same time and um and I, I did a little bit um not as much as I had envisioned I might you know but not that that's out of the cards you know I mean I definitely would like to you know do that sort of thing take on the road you know and it's like why wouldn't we you know it's like it's in our power to do it you know there's nothing keeping us from it like like there's no rules that say you have to you know do something this way or that way you know you just just go do it you know so i think that would probably be a next big step is get some kind of cool like i don't know big fucking truck and a camper or something you know and you know down the down the line somewhere i mean nina's still in school because we're driving home like this fucking homeschooler like why not you'd be a good teacher she'd get all her work done in three months you know <laughs> and like yeah, it's a good you know in theory uh, that's good but i mean the reality of you know having yeah. everyone adjust their life for your like crazy vision is it's kind of a lot to ask you know so um i don't know man like i'm just gonna focus on this for a while longer yeah. keep keep pushing and getting better at it you know keep trying to be a good dad yeah. you know yeah. i gotta get my back tattooed oh yeah full back piece something man i got this big empty hole like I, i'm pretty pretty tempted. i like the way you said that with like dread in your yeah, voice it's dreadful to think about man because i've I'm, done it dude it's, i wish the I'd... back isn't any easier than the front no it doesn't seem like it is it dude. isn't no. and i i did my front and then i was like oh i'm doing my back next this will be like a break i have ribs in my back too dude Fuck. it was oh i remember dude. the first outline being like oh that's great it's fucking worse than my front 
Yeah. So, uh. you know, a, 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 there is a part of me that is almost accepted that I may not be fully tattooed <laughs> by the time I'm an, an old guy. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Oh, but shit. I got to get something there. I have a big empty spot right in the middle of my back. So yeah. I got to do something there because I'm just embarrassed by it, man. <laughs> what <laughs> shirts are for? I don't take my shirt off anymore, dude. I'm like, I've become the guy at the shirt with the shirt on at the pool. Like oh, permanently, dude. I love that. I love that you're embarrassed of the one spot you haven't filled in yet. I am, dude, for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. then just buck up, drink a bottle of NyQuil, and get it over with. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Cool, man. Well, thank you for sharing your life, your experiences, your interesting way of handling being a creative and living a balanced life with your family um, and all of it. And, and for all of you guys listening who are looking for a rad tattooer in Southern California, check him out. Patrick Sweeney Tat or is it just Pat is it Patrick Sweeney Art Art. Yeah, there you and go. And that's S W E E N E Y Art. And you can find him there and uh, you know, he's taking appointments. You're not books closed. No, not at all. Yeah, I take like taking appointments. I, I love the consultation process. Mm-hmm. You know, get to meet someone, really, you know, get an idea for what they want and not just like you know, all of the other stuff, you know. No guests at the consultations either, you know. I don't want to have a consultation Ooh. with someone and their friend. You Ch- know, tripping in. someone and their significant other. Yeah. That's, like a, that's, that's a, a good policy. That's a big no-no right there. Yeah, that's mm. a... Me yeah. and you. This yeah. is a me and you journey. Absolutely. It should start that way and it yeah. should end that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So consultations are great. All right. And taking consults. All right. There you have it, everybody. Check him out on Instagram uh, or gurutattoo.com. You can find him on the website. And thank you for coming down. And, and keep doing rad yeah. tattoos, inspiring me and so hey, many others. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for employing me. Oh, <laughs> I'm stoked to work here, bro. No, you just <laughs> we, we just work together, my friend, and I'm honored to do so. All right. High five. All right. Boom. Woo. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. That was Patrick Sweeney. Uh, check him out. Um, subscribe to the channel. Check out my other episodes and keep those DMs coming and uh, different messages coming, letting me know what's working and what's not working. It's a young show. I'm still figuring things out, but uh, I'd like to hear from you. All right. Until the next one. Peace out.